This week we come to number 12 in our study on the book of Genesis and we're looking at Joseph, Prince of Egypt. <laughs> you don't need to be reminded of that story, which spans several chapters. It's too bad we can't go into this in great detail. You remember the scenario about how Joseph has been betrayed by his brother, sold into slavery, had the experience in Potiphar's house, been there in jail, and now he is being brought out of jail, and he, because of his interpretation of these dreams that are talking about the future, the, the trouble that is there in, uh, in Egypt with the good years and then the terrible years of famine and how Joseph knows what's coming and Pharaoh puts him in charge, makes him number two in the kingdom to arrange for all that needs to happen so that they can survive. To go back and look at exactly what he does, how he arranges exactly what needs to happen. It's, a, it's a, an amazing story and Pharaoh trusts Joseph to do just that. But into this whole story come Joseph's brothers, because they too have run out of food back there in Canaan. And the father, Jacob, sends them back down into Egypt to get food. They do this, they return, but there's a catch, because Joseph wants to find out whether his brothers have really repented, whether they really are sorry. I mean, they are plagued with guilt, and they're often telling themselves... It's because we did this that we're in so much trouble now. And you remember the story of them coming and uh, having to leave one brother behind like a hostage. And then the cup that's placed in Benjamin's sack. And, and so the story goes. Uh, Joseph trying really to find out whether his brothers are truly sorry what, for what they've done and whether he can really trust them. He wants to know. And then you have that very touching moment when he just breaks down and sends all the attendants away. And he's been talking to his brothers through an interpreter up till now because he's speaking Egyptian. They're, of course, speaking their own language. And then he talks in their own language to them, saying, I'm Joseph. And they can't believe it. This is gentleman there who's a court official number two in Egypt dressed in all his Egyptian regalia prince of Egypt who's saying I'm your brother Joseph and eventually they accept it and there's a wonderful reunion there is a lot of tears there's a lot of emotion there's a lot of hugging it's a great end I want to say end, at least for the moment, to that terrible, terrible disaster, that catastrophe of the family. When they betrayed their brother, they betrayed the whole family, they caused their father so much unnecessary pain. And eventually, of course, they are reconciled. And then they go back and bring Jacob back down and we'll see next time the conclusion to this story i want to ask you though as we think of its application for us today what do we learn from this story why is it there why does it occupy such a great chunk of genesis why should god spend so much time explaining what happened in this very troubled family I think the answer is really obvious. He wants us to understand that there is the possibility of reconciliation and healing, not only within our families, but with him. And in that sense, Joseph is a type of Christ. He, in his forgiveness, is showing what the Jesus does in trying to win us back. He is there and he is in a position to help his brothers, to save their lives, in fact. If, if without Joseph, they were doomed. Salvation was in the brother that they had betrayed. There's a very interesting perspective for us. As we think of what Jesus now does for us in healing us, healing our families, healing the damage that is done, it's a very great lesson as we think of God and what he is like, how he forgives us, and wins us back to love and to trust. Let's concentrate as we think about that 
this particular week.